When we first heard about the SR-72, many thought it was just another concept that would never fly. But the more information came to light, the more obvious it became that Lockheed Martin was working on something truly revolutionary. So what's really going on behind the closed doors of the Skunk Works? Is it true that the next step into the future of American aviation has already been taken only in secret? Let's find out! Equipped with Du Pratt and Whitney J-58 turbojet engines, this aircraft could reach a speed of MASH 3.2 and fly at an altitude of 85,000 feet, which forced the pilots to wear spacesuits so as not to simply lose consciousness. The aircraft had the smallest radar cross-section available to Lockheed at the time of its development, so what we have before us is also an early attempt at stealth design. The SR-71 paint was a black ferret iron, radar-absorbing coating that radiated heat from the surface, many times more efficiently than bare metal. Additionally, it reduced skin temperature, minimized thermal stress on the airframe, and gave the Blackbird an even more menacing appearance. About 85% of the structure was made of titanium, while the rest used polymer composite materials to avoid unnecessary weight. Lockheed specialists used an easily machined titanium alloy that softened at lower temperatures. However, the high temperatures during flight at several mesh required a special approach to the design and operation of the aircraft. For example, the main sections of the SR-71's skin were corrugated rather than smooth, causing aerodynamicists to jokingly call the Blackbird the Match 3 Ford Trimotor due to its peculiar corrugated aluminum skin. This design was actually reasonable, since high temperatures would simply split or twist a smooth skin, whereas the corrugated skin could expand vertically and horizontally, providing increased longitudinal strength. The fuselage panels were made to fit loosely against the aircraft on the ground, and proper alignment was achieved as the SR-71's body heated up, expanding by several inches. The outer windshield of the cockpit was made of three layers of glass, with cooling sections between them. The Aeon S navigation window was made of solid quartz, ultrasonically welded to a titanium frame thanks to which, even heating to 600 degrees Fahrenheit during missions was of no concern. The SR-71 was designed with a sole focus, to be undetectable on enemy radar. This effort even extended to using cesium-based fuel additives to reduce the radar visibility of exhaust plumes. However, even this legendary Colossus fell victim to its high operational cost and became one of the key reasons behind Congress's decision to halt operations in 1989. The U.S. Air Force officially retired the SR-71 in 1998, though NASA continued operating the last two airworthy aircraft until 1999, after which they were placed in museums. As the years passed, the question of a hypersonic successor to the Blackbird became more pressing. The task was not easy. According to some sources, during its service, the SR-71 managed to outrun more than 4,000 missiles fired at it, operating with virtual impunity even in the most hostile airspaces. From 2006 to 2007, Lockheed engineers, together with the Aerojet Rocketdyne team, began working on an engine capable of hypersonic speed. Aerojet Rocketdyne applied their scramjet, supersonic combustion ramjet technology to the future SR-72's engine design. The aircraft was supposed to receive an advanced air breathing propulsion system that could operate efficiently at subsonic, transonic, supersonic, and hypersonic speeds. A turbojet performs well from Mach 0 to 2.2, while ramjets are inefficient below Mach 0.5 but demonstrate excellent performance from Mach 3 to 6. The ideal solution for the son of Blackbird was a turbine-based combined cycle TBCC, system with a turbine engine for takeoff and landing and a scramjet for high-speed flight. The inlet and nozzle would share a common placement but feature separate airflow paths. As with the SR-71, material selection for the SR-72 became critical. Aircraft traveling at Mach 5 and above experience extreme temperatures enough to melt standard airframes. For comparison, a steel hull melts around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, while the SR-72's fuselage would need to withstand 3,000 500 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Engineers were tasked with using high-performance composites, such as carbon-ceramic metal mixtures used in IC-beams and retired space shuttles. In 2013, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works officially confirmed SR-72 development on their website, stating it would fly twice as fast as its predecessor reaching Mach 6. The team emphasized that the SR-71 had been developed with 20th century tools like slide rules and paper, without the aid of computers. In contrast, 
The SR-72 would be a product of a new generation. Its design would incorporate lessons learned from the Falcon Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2 (HTV-2), a rocket vehicle used to study the major technical challenges of hypersonic flight, including aerodynamics, thermal effects, and guidance systems. The project announcement's title was appropriately ambitious. Speed is the new stealth. Three years later, Lockheed Martin CEO Marilyn Hewson said the company was on the verge of a technological breakthrough that would allow the SR-72 to reach Mach 6 and build a hypersonic prototype the size of an F-22 Raptor for less than $1 billion. In 2018, Lockheed Martin Vice President Jack O'Banion reaffirmed the information, explaining how additive manufacturing and computer modeling had become essential to bringing the son of Blackbird to life not just on paper, but in reality. The SR-72's main arsenal would likely include hypersonic missiles, which are actively being developed by the U.S. military today. Some might argue that releasing such missiles during high-speed flight would pose major engineering challenges due to pressure and heat. But Lockheed had already proven this possible by launching air-to-air -air missiles at Mach 3 using YF-12 interceptor prototypes. Interestingly, Skunk Works helped design the secret hypersonic aircraft, Dark Star, for the Top Gun, Maverick film. About a month before its release, John Nielsen, Lockheed's Director of Communications for EMEA, tweeted that the Darkster trailer was a sneak peek at what might be the SR-72. Skunk Works did such a convincing job with Darkstar that China reportedly diverted a spy satellite to photograph it, thinking it was a real experimental aircraft, at least according to Jerry Bruckheimer, the film's producer. Or maybe China just really likes American action films. Originally, it was assumed that SR-72 prototype testing would begin in 2025, but now 2027 to 2029 seems more realistic. According to media reports, the SR-72 is part of the U.S. Air Force's hypersonic roadmap, which means there is budgetary support for the program. It's now in full swing with the goal of staying ahead of Russia and China. A lingering question is, how much money will Lockheed need to complete one of the most ambitious military projects in the past 50 years? The SR-72 will almost certainly be less serial and more expensive than the upcoming American sixth-generation fighter from the NGAD program. Furthermore, even if the military wishes otherwise, Congress is unlikely to allow exports of the SR-72, considering the number of secret technologies it will contain. What year do you think will finally see the SR-72 in the skies? And how similar will it be to its Blackbird ancestor? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.